Ireland's history has secrets to reveal. Its ancient homes recall a mystical past, filled with unspeakable tragedy. Some say the memories of the past still haunt Ireland today. Are there restless spirits trapped in the castles of Ireland? The answers await you on Truth or Scare. Do you believe in ghosts? That's a question most kids have been asked a million times. And if your answer is no, then let me ask you this. Have you ever visited the castles of Ireland? A lot of people say one trip is all it takes to make a believer out of anyone. Ireland's history is filled with claims of these strange things seen in these strange places. Some are based on truth. Some a legend. Either way, the stories are impossible to ignore. A trip to Ireland can sometimes seem like a journey back in time, into a land of myths and tall tales. On the east coast in County Carlow, the village of Clonagall is home to Huntington Castle. People claim this historic home is haunted by chilling visions from another world. The castle was built in the 1300s by the Kavanaugh clan. Since then, many other families have owned Huntington Castle. And with each family, new sections were added on and old sections were rebuilt. But one thing has stayed the same the feeling that the castle is surrounded by an ancient, mystical presence from Ireland's darkest history. They say this presence is so powerful, it can even be felt outside the castle walls. In this field nearby, one man claims he's seen a group of people wearing long robes. In fact, He's seen them many times. But every time he tries to get a better look, they disappear. The Durden Robertson family has owned the castle since the 1700s. The current owner is David Durden Robertson. When I was about 17, I'd gone to sleep on the couch in the library. He has no idea how long he slept. When he woke up, he said that the room was filled with bright light and the couch felt like it was spinning around. Suddenly, he saw two strange faces staring down at him. Then, he says, he felt his body rise and he floated above the couch. David wondered, could these ghostly figures have come from a cruel chapter in Ireland's history? The native inhabitants of Ireland were called the Celts. 1,500 years ago, a special class of men set themselves apart. They were called the Druids. The legend of the Druids is one of the most well-known in Irish mythology. As the religious leaders of the time, they were often as respected as the Celtic kings and chiefs. Legend says that they could communicate directly with the gods, but that was only one of their powers. They were believed to be able to create mist and start fires at will. The Druids commanded respect, but they were also feared, and no wonder. 
At times, when they wanted to please the gods, they would offer a human sacrifice. Some people think the figures David Durden Robertson saw looming over him in the library were the ghosts of ancient mystics, the druids returning to the land they once ruled, as if searching for their next victim. As another day ends at Huntington Castle, the truth stays hidden in the mists of time. Did this war hero return to save the family castle from beyond the grave? Next on Truth or Scare. Don't fly away. Most people think of a haunted house as a living nightmare. But according to the residents of one Irish castle, it was the ghost that made their dreams come true. Castle Leslie is in County Monaghan, near the border between Southern and Northern Ireland. Bishop John Leslie bought and named the estate in 1664. It's been in his family ever since. Today, his descendant, Samantha, lives here. But that almost wasn't the case. January, 1996. It was morning. Samantha was alone, cooking in the castle kitchen. Suddenly, she heard a strange noise behind her. Out of nowhere, a shower of orange pits flew against the wall right next to her. She looked around, no one in sight. Another time when Samantha was making lunch, she said the blender suddenly turned on. When she went to turn it off, she discovered that it wasn't even plugged in. But guests of the castle have had the strangest experiences of all. One night, in a bedroom called the Red Room, a couple staying over say they were woken up by a strange white light. Paddy! Paddy! It surrounded a man standing by the dresser, looking through the drawers. Then they watched, terrified as the man and the light faded away. A few weeks later, Back in the Red Room, another couple say they woke up to see the same man at the dresser. The man turned and walked over to their bed. He put his finger to his lips, softly whispered, shh, and disappeared. But the man in the strange white light wasn't gone for good. Just a few weeks after the second sighting, a third couple staying in the Red Room say they woke up to that same eerie light. Gerard. Again, the man was there, this time in the corner by the chest. Slowly, he walked across the room, held up a scroll of papers, and smiled. Then the couple noticed something about the man something the other witnesses had missed. On his forehead was a bloody wound. Was it a clue to the identity of this mysterious apparition? In the early 1900s, Samantha's great uncle, Norman Leslie, lived in the castle with his mother. When World War I broke out, he volunteered to fight. Back at the castle, Norman's mother, Lady Leonie Leslie, wrote him constantly, wishing that he would come home soon. On the morning of October 18th, 1914, it looked like Lady Leslie had gotten her wish. A castle employee said he'd seen Norman standing by the castle lake. But an hour later, there was no sign of Norman. And as the sun set, it became very clear. Norman was not coming at all. A 
week later, Lady Leslie got a telegram. She knew deep inside John! that it was bad news. Norman had been killed in action on October 18th, 1914, the same day he'd been seen on the shore of the lake. It was almost as if Norman had come home that day to say goodbye. Now, Samantha thinks her uncle has returned once again. She believes he was the one who threw those orange seeds against the wall and turned on the blender. And since the red room was Norman's old bedroom, she's sure he was the one who appeared there. And he was sending her a message. Around that time, Samantha's family was fighting to prove that they were the castle's rightful owners. But they couldn't find an important document they needed for their case. Samantha had given up hope. When her guests talked about the papers the ghostly man had held up, she decided to look again. As she picked up one file, chills ran up her spine she'd found the missing papers. And she says the ghost of great uncle Norman saved the family castle. Can these two women live through a night of heart-stopping terror? Find out when we return to Truth or Scare. In the castles of Ireland, no two reports of a ghost sighting are the same. Some people claim they've come face to face with a spirit they can actually see. But others say they've experienced a different type of terror. The terror that comes with the invisible visitors, known as poltergeists. That's exactly what was reported in County Limerick, on Ireland's west coast. The setting was Glen Castle, built in 1789. It's currently owned by the Fitzgerald family. Two members of the castle staff claim to have recently felt the wrath of a poltergeist. Nancy and May are sisters. They've worked at Glen Castle for over 40 years. In all that time, they say they'd never had a paranormal experience. But one night in 1991, all that changed. It was a little after midnight when Nancy turned out the light. Soon after that, she heard a noise on the stairs. Was someone coming up? Nancy said it sounded like the person was struggling. She was gripped by fear. Nancy called out to another employee of the castle, Una, who was asleep in the next bedroom. Una said she was awake too, and she'd also heard the noise. Then, total chaos. Terrified, Nancy crossed the room in the dark and found the light switch. As soon as she turned it on, everything went quiet. She opened the door and looked out. Nothing. The mayhem was over, if it had happened at all. Sir Desmond Fitzgerald owns Castle Glynn. He thinks the incident might be related to an experience he had here as a child. After his mother read him a story, Desmond was on his way up to his room when he saw something he would never forget. A frayed rope hanging in midair. What's wrong, dear? What's happened? There's nothing there. But when he brought his mother out to show her, the mysterious rope had disappeared. Don't be frightened. Pick up the book and let's go inside. Had it all been in his head? Mm -hmm. 
Desmond found out that back in 1867, there had been a terrible accident. The castle was being repainted. To reach the ceiling above the staircase, the painters built a scaffold out of wood planks and heavy rope. But something went tragically wrong. With no warning, one of the ropes came undone. The painter on the scaffold fell. He died instantly. Some wonder if the rope that Desmond saw was a vision of the rope that caused the tragic accident almost a hundred years before. Castle Glen won't reveal the answer. At least, not yet. Next, at Ireland's most haunted castle, they say terror has a face. And this is it. When Truth or Scare returns. There are so many stories of haunted castles in Ireland. Most people can't keep track of them. But some accounts are totally unforgettable. Like in what many say is Ireland's most haunted castle. The witness looked right into the face of, and could even smell the putrid stench of a horrifying apparition. Lub Castle can be found in County Offaly. It was built in the 1300s, but legend says the hauntings are connected to a horrifying bloody history that began in 1532. That year, the local chieftain Mulrooney O'Carroll died. His son, the priest, believed the castle should be his. But the priest's brother, Ty, well, he begged to differ. One night in the castle chapel, as the priest led a service for the family, Tig silently climbed the dark stairway. The priest had no idea that his brother was coming to take his life. Since that night, this room has been known as the Bloody Chapel. But that gruesome tragedy is only part of the castle's legacy of horror. In a room just off the Bloody Chapel, there was a dungeon called an oubliette. Enemies of the family were brought through the chapel and then pushed, falling eight feet down onto a spike where they would be forgotten forever. In the early 1900s, when the dungeon was discovered, it was piled high with human skeletons. Not long after that terrifying discovery, it is said that the creature that haunts Lep Castle emerged. By now, the castle was owned by Jonathan and Mildred Dobby. Like a lot of people at the time, Mildred was interested in the occult. She had heard that Lep Castle was haunted. She wanted to know for sure. Mildred thinks that it was this seance that released the spirit of a primitive ghost known as It. Because a few nights later, Mildred was in the castle gallery, looking down to the main hall. Suddenly, she felt a hand on her shoulder. She turned and found herself face to face with It. That was the name she gave the disgusting creature. And what she described just might make you sick. It was about the size of a sheep, but it had a human face. Its eyes were just deep black holes in its head. And the smell, she said it was unmistakable. The stench of rotting flesh. Mm -hmm. 
in Ireland, a country with such a long history of supernatural encounters, the stories of castle ghosts will never totally disappear. And as long as the stories remain, so will the mystery. Not exactly a pleasure trip, huh? But I guess a quest for ancient spirits is never easy. And neither is deciding whether or not to believe. There's still no scientific proof that ghosts exist. Then again, there's no proof that they don't. But after seeing the castles of Ireland, one thing's for sure. If a ghost comes your way, you'll know exactly what it is when you see it. Yeah.